Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today from Oslo is Bjorn Bondlian, who is a historian and has come upon Armenians and uh, their role in Norwegian history, or the role of Norwegians in Armenian history. It depends on how we look at this. Bjorn, thank you for joining us on CivilNet. Thank you for inviting me. How did you stumble upon the Armenians? When did Armenians invade Norway? What happened? I was looking for Norwegians uh, participating in the Crusades and doing pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Uh, and I stumbled across uh, a, a manuscript that uh, was supposed to be made in Antioch in the 1260s. And I wondered how did this manuscript come to Norway? And then I find a curious line uh, in an Icelandic source, Icelandic annal, uh, just saying that Armenians came to Norway in 1314. And no historian has ever uh, noticed that. So I wonder why did they came to Norway? So why did they come to Norway? Yeah, the, the Icelandic source, uh, it doesn't have a good explanation. It just note that they, they, they came uh, and that they had brought gifts with them. So they had some kind of purpose. But what purpose? I, I uh, can think of three reasons. Uh, the first is maybe uh, the Armenians from the kingdom in Kilikia uh, wanted to have a marriage alliance. The king at the time, um, King Ushin, um, he was without a wife and he sought a bride. But at the same time, he was in negotiations with the king of Aragon, James of Aragon. Uh, so I don't think it was a kind of marital alliance. Norway is far uh, yeah, that removed wasn't from. That wasn't going Armenia. to be very strategically useful, was it? No. Uh, so my second thought was that maybe it was to get military assistance to defend uh, Kilikian uh, Armenia. Yeah. Uh, I guess the Mamluks, perhaps. Um, but then I found out that King Ushin, uh, the king at the time, he sought a balance between the Mamluks. Uh, and also the Mongols, the Ilkhans uh, in Baghdad. Um, and he didn't really sought to, to kind of provoke uh, those, um, um, the Mamluks or the, or the Mongols with kind of military attacks or, uh, or so on. So that wasn't so it? I, I don't think so. So my third option was maybe the Armenians were interested in trade, kind of exotic goods from Norway and I think the most likely item that they, they sought might have been falcons, hunting falcons, because that was kind of um, much sought after both from the Mamluks and the Ilkhans of Baghdad. That whole part of the world, sure. Yeah, and I found other sources indicating both that Norwegians went to Cairo actually, to, to visit uh, Baibars in 1280. Uh, the Norwegian went to Tunis um, in the uh, 1260s, and both of them it was to sell falcons. It was really valuable. It was more valuable than gold, <laughs> really. Well, if Armenians did anything well in the medieval times, it was certainly trade. Yes, because, uh, it's, uh, of course, they have the, the city Ayas that, Marco Polo went to and describes as a really rich harbor, uh, like uh, with trade goods coming from the, the east, from Asia, and then to the Mediterranean and into Europe. Um, so it must have been a really interesting place to be in the early 14th century. Uh, and I found, found one Norwegian who might have been in Armenia. Uh, in the 1270s, perhaps uh, establishing a kind of contact, making the Armenians aware of Norway. And also, I found out that uh, um, the Armenian chronicler, um, Hetum of Korikos, who, who wrote an, uh, a chronicle about the Mongols, uh, he visited the papal court in, in 1307. Uh, he met a Norwegian there. Um, the, the right hand of the Norwegian king, actually, who also went to the Pope at the exact same time. And you're, reading, and you're reading all of this in what language? 
Uh, well, the Icelandic annals, they are in Old Norse, the, the old Scandinavian language. Um, so it's a bit difficult to read if you're not a Scandinavian, perhaps. But then there's also uh, Latin sources describing Norwegians' travels to the Holy Land. Do, you've also found uh, all sorts of old-fashioned, stabbing-in-the-back realpolitik stories, huh? Yeah, <laughs> because this king, King Oshin, uh, who ruled about 1308 to 1320, um, he was mix mixed up in a lot of family intrigues. Um, and it was his cousin who wanted power, uh, and also his uncle, and so on. So it was a, uh, a lot of intrigues and also stabbing in the back, as you say, and poisoning. Sounds wonderful. Is there a movie coming or is this all going to go into a history book? I, f I think that <coughs> HBO should really make a TV series based on Kiliki and Armenia. <laughs> like <a little laughs> that would be great. Absolutely. Thank you so for much. bringing it all out because, you know, up to this point, our understanding of Norway and its Christian heritage and input into Armenia has been the missionaries that were in the Middle East after the genocide. This is, this is much exactly. more fun. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too. It was wonderful to find these sources and this kind of contact between the far north and, uh, and Armenia. It's fascinating. And you've made some of this available to Norwegian newspapers. Yes, I wrote a, a, a small um, article in a Norwegian newspaper uh, and I'm planning to write a longer article with references and, and so on in English uh, soon. So uh, I hope well, that might uh, trigger someone else to kind of maybe they find some other sources as well. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. We're thankful to Norway's honorary consul here in Armenia, Timothy Strait, for pointing all of your work out to us. And we're thankful to you for making the time. Oh, that was a pleasure. I've been speaking with Bjorn Blandlian, almost an Armenian name, a historian in Oslo, studying, uh, among other things, the engagement of Norwegians in Armenian Cilician history and, and the reverse. Thank you for staying with us on CivilNet. Mm -hmm.